Now before we get into this video, just quickly take a look at the trades on your screen right now. They are for seven total trades. I can't remember all the names, but I believe they're Andre Godala, Nicholas Batum, Ronnie Brewer, Tabo Cephalosha, and Iman Shumpert. So five different names, seven different possible trades. I know they're all listed, obviously, right here. And pretty much let me know what you guys think of them in the comments. And then I'll get explain what I'm going to do and how I'm going to organize all these trades. You know, if I do any of them or all of them. <laughs> I can't do all of them, but... You know, basically, these are the offers that I'm looking for for Lockdown Defenders. So let me know which ones you like. I'll probably do one of them. Maybe two Batum. I could kind of work into doing two deals because he's a small forward. But anyway, let's get into this gameplay. So what's going down, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, a.k.a. the King of Boston. And I guess probably thinking, well, hey, episode 18 post on a Wednesday. Cool. Extra episode or something. Yeah, well... I'll explain to you guys what I'm going to do. So like I said before, let me know which of those deals you guys want to see. You can pause them and look at them closely. Uh, a lot of them are for Stucky. I, I think, in fact, I pretty much threw Stucky in every single one of those deals. Um, now, I'll explain in a sec kind of my thinking behind those deals. But what I'm going to do is on Friday, I'm going to have an extra episode of this series. It's basically going to be a trades video because this is the last game we play before the trade deadline and before All-Star Weekend, actually. So I'll go through the All-Star Weekend, just probably simulate and everything, and then uh, I go through the trades and, and such in that video on Friday, pretty much. Not going to have gameplay, it's just going to be me trading, you know, making whatever trades I decide to do, and also giving you guys a little update on who's doing well, you know, what stats are happening and all that stuff. But um, anyway, so I know last time I told you guys that it was my first game in Hall of Fame. I was actually wrong. I guess I left it out Superstar by accident when I was playing the Pacers. So this is actually my first game on Hall of Fame for this association we're getting it started out right with an early 2-0 lead but let me explain to you guys um you know what my thinking behind each of those guys is so i kind of took into consideration all your comments below in the last episode and looked for some guys now all five of the guys that i listed do have lockdown defender as a signature skill uh if you listed i know a couple people listed shane battier danny green um i think tony allen too but the problem with those guys is none of them have lockdown defender and i'm looking for a guy with the signature skill of lockdown defender so, uh, Nicholas Batuma, I'll, I'll talk about first because it's interesting and in how this could kind of work out with the Harrison Barnes deal, which by the way, I think I'm going to do as well in that video on Friday. I'm probably going to do the Parsons for Harrison Barnes deal. Um, now, Nicholas Batum is 6'8", he's young, he's on a 3-year $34 million contract, which I'm not the biggest fan of, as opposed to a guy like Iman Shumpert, who's only in the second year of his rookie deal, but Nicholas Batum is young he's very he's, he has long arms i'm not sure if the game accounts for that but um he gets like a steal and a half and two blocks per game or maybe the other way around in the nba right now and he's a very good player he could play he could play shooting guard or small forward for us now that's that's where this gets you know kind of tricky batum could play shooting guard and we can make the harrison Barnes trade or we can make the batum trade and even make one more of these deals not really sure probably giving up parsons at, at some point but you know, if we put Batum at the small four position. Because it's basically going to be, you know, Parsons for Barnes based in probably a pick or something. Or, you know, Parsons for Batum. And maybe Stucky for someone else. Or Stucky for Batum and then Parsons for Barnes. You know, it's, it's, I don't know if you guys follow me here. But, um, yeah, so, you know, Nicholas Batum we're very flexible with. And he's a very versatile player. can handle the ball a little bit. He's a good shooter. Uh, like I said, it's great defensively. I mean, he's he's a young star in the NBA. He's a 20-point scorer right now, I believe. So he's very, very good. He's very underrated. Not many people have heard of him. He was a backup to Gerald Walls before Gerald Walls was traded at last year's trade deadline. And he really emerged in the second half. Now, if I don't get Nicholas Batum, here are the other options. So obviously we have Amon Shumpert. Um, you know, he's another guy. He's similar to Avery Bradley, he's not as tall. He's only six foot five. So that's where we could possibly go wrong here because it might be hard for him to cover a guy like a LeBron James or a Carmelo Anthony. But he's young. He's going to be on a rookie contract for the rest of the season and then two more years after that. So he'd be very cheap, allowing us to possibly sign someone else in the offseason. And, you know, he's a young star too. He's probably never going to be the scorer that Batum's going to be. But he's very athletic. He'd definitely be a good option for us at some point. You know, if we need him to shoot a three, he's a decent shooter. Uh, and, you know, he'd, fit, he'd complement Shabazz Muhammad very well, I think. Now, we also have the Andre Iguodala deal. And, you know, this is another one of these guys on a big contract. It's a four-year, $45 million deal, so it's going to be a cap hit. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably going to want to see Iguodala. I'm not the biggest fan of it because he's, he's like 30 years old. And he's going to start declining soon. And once that athleticism goes away from him, he's not that great of an offensive player. 
but he's a good ball handler. He's really a point forward slash, you know, point shooting guard. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so he'd be another option. As I mentioned before, I think I'm a bigger fan of the Batum deal, but Iggy's just basically a step ahead of Batum, but they're pretty much going in opposite directions, if you know what I mean. You know, Batum's still developing. Uh, Iggy's pretty much done. He's pretty much going to start declining at this point. With that four-year deal, you know, within four years, he's a declining 73 overall guy in a $10 million deal. That's going to be kind of rough, and I do plan on doing this association for a while. I don't, I don't know exactly how many years, but I'd love to do, like, six years. I think that'd be really cool. Probably be, like, the longest association on YouTube. That'd be freaking awesome. But, um, so, you know, Iggy's the other deal. And then we can also go the cheap way. We can keep Stucky. Um, and but if we do the Ronnie Brewer or the Tabo Cephalosha deal, now, both those guys are free agents after this year. And I don't know if I'd resign them or not, but basically, we'd have a ton of cap space. We'd go out and sign somebody in free agency. You know, either re-sign Cephalosha or Brewer or, you know, go after someone big. Um, or we could also look through the draft. Now, I've looked at the draft, and there isn't anyone with a lockdown signature skill. Lockdown defender signature skill, which really sucks. But, um, you know, if, if I if I do open up a position at small forward or shooting guard, I can get a guy like Andrew Wiggins or Jabari Parker. Wiggins has, like, five signature skills, so that'd be really cool to have him. Uh, I'd probably rather have him over Parker, even though I'm a bigger fan of Parker in real life. But uh, Aaron Kraft is a good perimeter defender. He's a point guard coming out of Ohio State, so that'd be good. But um, I th I'm thinking the trade might be the way. The trades might be the way to go. But like I said, if we do get Brewer or Cephalosha, which would not only cost us cheaper, we'd probably give up CDR. Or I think one of the deals was Moultrie and Toledovic or something. Two guys who don't play for us right now. They're both on our reserves. Um, you know, then we can go after someone in free agency. We'd have a lot of cap space. It, we, it wouldn't be as bad of a cap hit because of us resigning. Uh, you know, Greg Monroe, and we're going to have to re-sign Brandon Knight in, I believe, one more year after this one, so, you know, we're getting towards the point where a couple guys aren't going to be on rookie contracts anymore, so, you know, we can save that cap space and kind of just be a little bit better off in the future, but I do like the idea of doing some of these trades. I think, personally, my favorite deal might be the Batum deal and then putting him at the two and getting Harrison Barnes. Um, I think that'd be awesome. I think Batum is so versatile. I think he would more than make up for the lack of scoring that we're going to lose from losing Ronnie Stuckey. Unlike, I don't think Shumpert or Iguodala can really fill that. I know Iguodala is a pretty good scorer, but he only averages like 13 points a game in real life, and he's just not that, he's not as versatile as he used to be. He's not as good of a shooter. Um, well, he's never really been a great shooter, but he's, you know, he's athletic, but, you know, he really uses that athleticism to get away with a lot of weaknesses in his game. But, you know, we'll see. So let me know below, I might, you know, I'm not going to make a poll for this or anything, I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of base it off of what you guys think I should do in the below, because I kind of took this idea from Lumberjack, I really want this to be our association, I don't want it to just be mine, I want you guys to feel like you're a part of it, I want you guys, I want to give you guys, you know, something, not only to watch, but like I said, to also be a part of, I think that's something special, I really like that, how Lumberjack does that with his association, I'd love it if, you know, you guys really felt a part of this. You know, my last video at the time of me recording this commentary has like 29 comments on it, which is pretty high for me. So, I, I'm really, I actually has more because of my replies, but 29 of your guys' comments, which I'm, I, I love. And I love my fans, I love my subscribers, I want to give back to them in any way I can, you know, without, I don't know, I, I worded that poorly, but you know. Anyway, so let's get into the gameplay here, it's, it's been a while, but, um, not been a while, but it's a little bit late at this point. We're down by six, we're trying to get something going, we hung with the Sixers this, really, this entire entire game but they just started to pull away as you can see Brandon Knight's gonna hit the three there but we could not stop them from making their free throws we would foul them and you can see it's now 114 to 107 I didn't even intentionally foul them I just kept fouling them upon accident whether it be on on shots or on reaching fouls and I, they're in the bonus as you can see but uh Greg Monroe gets a nice put back there but uh we're down by eight at this point nothing we can do Brandon Knight's gonna get himself an open look it's actually gonna drain this three so we cut it to five but Delonte West, as you're going to see in just a moment, is going to catch the inbound. Well, you're not going to see him catch it, but he's going to drain these two free throws. They go up seven. I'm going to bring the ball down the court with Brandon Knight. I'm actually going to throw it down. As you can see, it's going to get stolen by Drew Holiday. And that's pretty much going to wrap up this gameplay. They give it to Evan Turner, and I decided to not even foul at that point. It wasn't worth it. So we're going to end up losing this game 119-112. It was a very competitive game. Something I'm very happy about in my first game in Hall of Fame. I was a little bit afraid I was going to get blown away, absolutely. Just because sometimes I struggle in my career, you know, defending shots or whatever, but... Uh, you know, I, I survived, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm making the move to Hall of Fame. But you can see they dominated us in, like, every category. 
Uh, they shot a lot of free throws. They were 22 of 25 from the line. We're only 9 of 12. I think that was the big difference. But anyway, that's going to wrap this video. So I do thank you guys for watching. As you can see the stats there, Howard had 22 9. It's a good game from him. And Brandon Knight also had 22 4 and 8 assists. So it's good to see. That he's still got a good game. I thought I could take advantage of that mismatch, you know, him covering Greg Monroe, but I wasn't really able to. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And as always, I'm out. Peace.